So a quick recap, recap on Mercury's timing, then I'll tell you one last thing about it and to wrap up. We ended with this table here comparing Mercury and the Earth. So, of course, we know on Earth, from one of the previous videos, that a sidereal day is just shy of 24 hours, 23 hours, 56 minutes. Again, you have to wait an extra four minutes to see the sun relative to a reference star. Solar day is, of course, one day, 24 hours. And, of course, it takes us 365 days to move all the way around the sun in one orbit. Mercury, on the other hand, uh, one of these sidereal days is 59 days, not 23 hours, 56 minutes. So it's quite a bit longer on Mercury. And as we discussed, Mercury is sort of a, a slow rotator. The solar day on Mercury, noon to noon, is 176 days. So when you see the sun at noon, again, you're having your lunch. You have to wait another 176 days for the sun to be nice and high in the sky again for that noon. And, of course, the orbit is just 88 days. So Mercury is really humming around the Earth. So the um, conclusion from this table of numbers here is, of course, the orbit time of Mercury is quite fast. And the rotation here that drives the sidereal and solar bit is quite slow. Okay. But one last thing on Mercury's timing. So if you recall the moon just for a minute, her, our own moon here, if you take the, the ratio of its orbit time to its rotation time, you'll get one. Because remember, the, the moon is tidally locked, so the orbital time, the time it takes to go around the Earth once, is 30 days. And well, the rotation time is also 30 days, and so 30 over 30 is, of course, just equal to 1. And so that's sort of the ratio of those two times for our good old moon. Okay, if you look at the same ratio for Mercury now, I know Mercury isn't a moon or anything like that, but just a comparison here. Let's look again once more at its orbit time. to its rotation. Okay, so as you pull the numbers off the chart above, the orbit time is about 88 days, and the rotation time is about 59 days. Okay, so again, for the moon, its orbit time is 30 days, and rotation day is 30 days, but for Mercury, the orbit is takes only takes 88 days, whipping around really fast, and the rotation is kind of slow at 59 days. Let's pull these right off the chart, right? Okay, so if you calculate this ratio here, for this, I get a number about 1.49, which is awfully close to 1.5, which is awfully close to 3 halves. Okay. And so these numbers here, these sort of like, I don't know what you want to call this thing, like a, you know, sort of like a nice ratio. You know, and by nice, I mean it isn't something like, you know, something weird like 33, something weird like, you know, 33.875 to four point. 149, anything like that. 3 to 2, you know, kind of a nice ratio. This is evidence of tidal locking. And remember what tidal locking is, is that warping of a planet because of the strong gravitational pull of what it's, what it's orbiting, or a moon for that matter, until something gets synchronized. Tidal locking in, uh, you know, sync synchronization like that. So we know the moon got synchronized to the earth because of tidal locking. So we always see the same face of the earth. Well, it isn't quite the same dynamic on Mercury. It's not like we all see the same side of Mercury, Mercury, but whenever you see ratios like this, like something even three to two like that, that is not going to be a coincidence out there. It isn't just like Mercury formed and had this interesting three to two ratio between its orbital period and its rotational period. That is evidence of a process going on behind there over the billions of years called tidal locking, and that's how Mercury sits now. So these ratios here of and tidal locking are all over the solar system. It isn't just something that happened for the moon to give us always the same face that we see. And here's a second example of seeing in Mercury. It isn't like it just happened there. It's actually something that goes on all over the solar system. So in conclusion here, for some of Mercury's timing here, we see a few things. Uh, the rotation was a big mystery for Mercury for a really long time. They just didn't know if it was rotating. It wasn't found out until about 1962, uh, unrelated. Uh, but it was sort of a time of the first moon landing, you know, about that kind of time there when it was first known. Because it's just so slow. The rotation is hard to observe. Remember, in part because of the sun. Mercury's always pointing toward the sun, so you have all this brightness to get around. But also because the rotation is just so darn slow. It's hard to, reserve, hard to observe, you know, with that 59 days. Uh, because also on Mercury, I don't know how you would imagine doing that, but if you wanted to observe something rotating, say like Mercury like this, 
you might want to focus something like on a big feature, like maybe there's a big crater or a big mountain or something like that. Let me just draw one thing here. Hang on just a second, like one big feature to focus on. So if Mercury kind of looked like that, maybe there was something like, you know, a, a big volcano right here that you could sort of track as it went around, almost like we tracked the little green person in the last sort of video here. It might go around like that. But uh, Mercury is very sort of bland, bland surface. So sure, on Mercury, there are a lot of craters. Let me just uh, maybe clean this up a little here. Mercury's surface is very bland. And sure, there are a lot of craters, but hard to distinguish, right? Um, and so what we need, we would have needed some feature like this in order to sort of track it, but that was just hard to do. So what I'd like to show you then in the next video is how is it they finally discovered that Mercury has this 59-day rotation.